Let's take a very brief tour through the solar system. We'll start on the inside and work our way out. So first up, the Sun. The Sun is an average sized star about halfway through its 10 billion year lifespan. It provides us with heat and light and is essential for the process of photosynthesis, which is the beginning of most food webs. Now note I say most food webs. In 1977, life was actually discovered around deep sea hydrothermal vents that use chemical energy and the process of chemosynthesis as the basis of the food web. Biology textbooks had to be rewritten because suddenly not all life depended ultimately on the sun for the source of energy. Next up, Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, but it's actually not the hottest. We'll get to that in a sec. Another thing about Mercury is that it's the smallest planet in the solar system, and actually, get this, it's shrinking. It's about 15 kilometers smaller than it was just a mere 4 billion years ago. We think this is because its iron core is cooling, becoming more solid, and therefore reducing the planet's volume. After Mercury, we have Venus. The second planet from the Sun, it's actually Venus that is the hottest planet. Now this is due to its very thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, which has led to a runaway greenhouse effect. Venus also has lots of volcanoes, and lots of large ones too. In fact, 167 of them are more than 100 kilometers across. That brings us to Earth, the third planet from the Sun. Earth is so far the only place in the solar system that harbors life. 71% of its surface is covered by the ocean. Though, actually, Earth contains less total water than some moons. Also, we actually have better maps of the surface of Mars than we do of Earth's seafloor. Crazy, hey? Now, we won't just confine this to planets, so let's talk about the Moon. Our Moon is actually unusual in that it's much closer to the Earth than any other Moon is to its planet, and it's also relatively much bigger. It was formed from the leftover debris when a Mars-sized body called Thea impacted Earth about 4.5 billion years ago, when the solar system was still young. Most of Thea was absorbed by Earth, making Earth bigger, whilst some material was thrown out into space and coalesced into the Moon. Back to the planets now, Mars. Mars owes its red colour to the iron oxide present on its surface. Iron oxide is commonly called rust. Mars also has the largest volcano in the solar system. Olympus Mons. Moving up from Mars, we have the asteroid belt. Also known as minor planets or planetoids, asteroids are small rocky bodies that mostly populate the space between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. They are rich in precious metals as well as water, and the mining of asteroids is sure to be a future industry. Next up on our trip through the solar system is Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet, having two and a half times the mass of all the other planets combined. However, because it spins so rapidly, a day lasts just under 10 hours. Jupiter has an enormous storm, big enough to fit a couple of Earths, called the Great Red Spot. Now, this storm has been raging for at least 350 years. Jupiter's moon Europa. In 2012, the Hubble Space Telescope photographed plumes shooting 200 kilometers out from Europa, one of Jupiter's 79 moons. It's believed that Europa hides a vast ocean of liquid water, twice as much water as the Earth has. Tidal forces from Jupiter stretch the Moon, which could create volcanic or hydrothermal activity on the seafloor, supplying nutrients that could make the ocean suitable for living things. Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet. It has a huge hexagonal storm, more than twice the size of the Earth, at its North Pole. Saturn is best known for its extensive ring system. Actually, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune also have rings, but without the grandeur of Saturn's. Saturn's moon Enceladus. Whilst Enceladus, Saturn's sixth largest moon, is covered in ice, it's believed to have a liquid water ocean underneath. Large geysers of water shoot out from its south pole. These geysers contain hydrogen molecules, which suggest hotspots or hydrothermal vents in the hidden ocean. And as previously mentioned on Earth, Hydrothermal vents are surrounded by life. Uranus is the seventh planet, and yes, it's actually pronounced Uranus. It's the third largest planet in the solar system. Whilst the average temperature is not as cold as Neptune, it does reach the lowest extremes of temperature in the solar system at minus 224 degrees Celsius. Neptune. Like Jupiter and Saturn, 
Neptune also has a huge raging storm, in this case about the size of the Earth, called the Great Dark Spot. Winds in this storm reach 2,400 kilometers per hour, the fastest winds in the solar system. Neptune's moon Miranda has the highest cliffs in the solar system, called Verona Rupees. Voyager 2 took this photo of the 10 kilometer high scarp as it flew past on 24th of January, 1986. That's the end of the planets in the solar system, but we still have a few things to mention. Thousands of small objects orbit the sun beyond Neptune in an area called the Kuiper Belt. The objects are asteroids, short period comets, those with an orbital period of less than 200 years, dwarf planets, and other small bodies. All of these bodies are referred to as Kuiper Belt objects, or KBOs, or sometimes trans-Neptunian objects, meaning past Neptune. Pluto, the largest dwarf planet, is the most famous KBO. Comets. A comet is a small icy body in orbit around the sun. Away from the sun, they're small frozen objects, but when they're near the sun, they heat up and form tails that stream out behind them. Comets actually have two tails, a dust tail pointing back in the direction the comet has come from, and a gas tail that always points away from the sun because it's pushed out into space by the solar wind. Voyager 1 and 2. The Voyager space probes were launched in 1977. Initially a five-year mission, this was extended to 12 years and is now actually still ongoing with the Voyager Interstellar mission. On 25th August 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space. And wrapping up our tour through the solar system, the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is a shell of icy objects in the outermost reaches of the solar system. It's the home of long period comets, comets with an orbital period of more than 200 years. The Oort cloud contains an estimated 2 trillion objects. So, that's a brief look at our solar system. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah. And subscribe too, it's up here. And here's another video.